In this last video of the dynamic programming playlist, we're going to take our uh, dynamic programming solution to the longest common subsequence problem and use the array uh, that we have, or the vector of vectors, our table, in order to find the actual string uh, that, that was our uh, longest common subsequence, or find a string. And it's important to note there that the reality is there could be lots of different strings that are longest common subsequences. Uh, while the integer value here is unique, the string itself is not necessarily unique. And so uh, you have to uh, you, know, you have to ba basically make some choices as you go through here, and we're going to return one of the strings that happens to have that length. So what we need to do in here is after we have gone through and filled in that table T, we're then going to um, actually make two variables, but not set them to zero, sorry, set i equal to s1 dot length minus one, and j equals s2 dot length minus one, I'm also going to make a string um, the result is going to start off as an empty string and I'm going to change this so that we return a pair of int and string so we'll go ahead and we will include I believe pair is in uh, actually, is pair inside of pair? We'll find out in just a second. It'll either be inside of pair or inside of utility. Make sure this is syntactically happy. second and see how close I am on the syntax there. Pair is not the correct place for it. It's tuple that's actually in tuple. Okay, pair is inside of utility. That was happy it compiles. And if we run it, we get our answer of seven, uh, but no string because all that we have is the empty string. So I want to keep going while either, well, while i is greater than or equal to zero and j is greater than or equal to zero. If either one of those goes below zero, well, we're done. We can't add any more characters uh, into our solution. So what happens inside of here? Well, first we need to compare the characters at um, S1 sub i and S2 sub j, just like we did up here, because if they're a match, then what happens is we know that, that character goes into our result and we decrement our i and j. So if S1 sub i is equal to S2 sub j, what do we do here? Well, as I said, we take the result and we're going to push back this one sub i. Note that really we're building this from the back to the front. I'm going to build, I'm going to, this string result is going to be backwards and then we're going to reverse it and the reason is that string doesn't have an efficient uh, push front operation so we're just going to push the back which will be more efficient for us and uh, then we'll have to uh, reverse the result before we return it. Okay, so we push back that 
minus minus i minus minus j else well what if they're not the same well then the value came either from the i minus 1 or the j minus 1 so how about I say if uh, and I know that our values are greater than or equal to so I want to go ahead and use my lookup function if lookup nt of i minus 1 comma j is greater than lookup nt of i comma j minus 1 so if the value that's it uh, at i minus 1 is greater, that means that that is where this came from, and so we decrement i, else we decrement j. And so we're going to wind up walking back through this two-dimensional array. When something matches, we move diagonally. Otherwise, we move either horizontally or vertically and come all the way down. And we can reverse the result begin, result, end. Let's see if that compiles. And I run, and there's our answer, which for the input that we have down here, you might recall, we have the five A's there, and a B and a C. Actually, there are multiple B's and C's that we could pick from. This has five A's scattered in among the, the M's, and then a B, C at the end. Uh, it is interesting to note what would happen if we put the BC up here. Well, now our longest common subsequence is going to go down to 5, and it should only be the A's. Yeah. Because, yes, there is a B and a C that can match up, but as soon as you match this B to any of those B's, you've already skipped over all of your A's. Um, and, yeah, and that winds up being a problem. So, uh, Here's your code. We could obviously make this a bit more compact, uh, but this is, shows you how you can walk backward through the table that you built to kind of recapture the solution um, that you have. And this also is a polynomial operation. Uh, there's only a single loop here, so and either i or j gets decremented every time. So this is order m plus n. Uh, where m and n are the two lengths on there. Uh, so it's, it's linear, and that makes us very happy. So all of this is quite fast, and we could run this on very large strings, and it will operate uh, quite quickly. So that's it for dynamic programming.